PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, one of the most common hormonal endocrine health problem of a young women. Out of 10 women, nearly 4 to 6 women are struggling with PCOS in today's time. And everyone wants to get treated. But when we talk about the treatment, you must understand that what type of PCOS you have. If you know the type of the PCOS and then if you treat it accordingly, you have a higher chances of getting out of this problem. And what are those types? That's what we are going to learn in today's topic. Namaste. My name is Dr. Tanvi Mayur Patel. I'm an endocrinologist, hormone specialist, a doctor from Mumbai, India. Now, before we continue, one information if you want to watch this video in Hindi language, then on the i button and below in the description box, there is a link. If you click on that link, you will find this video in Hindi language. Agar aapko aaj ka is video Hindi bhaasha mein dekhna hai, to upar i button pe aur niche description box mein ek link hai. Agar aap us link pe click karenge, to is video ko aap Hindi bhaasha mein paenge. So let's continue our today's topic that's on a polycystic ovarian syndrome. Most common endocrine health problem. What are the types of PCOS? That's what we are going to learn. First and foremost, you must understand that PCOS is not a disease. Yes, you heard it right. It's not a disease. It's rather a condition wherein lot of other parameters of your body are disturbed. And because of the various disturbance in parameters, your body is showing the symptoms. Symptoms of excess or a higher level of the male hormone, that's an androgen, and symptoms of a disturbed ovulation, which in turn leads into the monthly regular cycle abnormalities. Okay. So basically, it's not a disease in itself, it's actually a syndrome of various conditions. It is possible that one person can have a major component of a one functional type of PCOS and other types can also be existing. However, the four major functional type of PCOS is as per our clinical experience and what kind of patient gets treated better with a one kind of a treatment. So let's talk about the first type of PCOS and that is called as a insulin resistant PCOS or we also call it as a metabolic PCOS. As the name suggests the insulin resistance means there is an insulin resistance. By the way this category of the PCOS is one of the most common nearly 70% of the PCOS belongs to this category. What is insulin? See, insulin is a hormone. It comes from a gland that is a pancreas, which is located in your abdomen. The main role of the insulin hormone is to balance your blood sugar. Whatever food you eat, that food has a energy in the form of a glucose. Insulin ensures that this glucose gets actually converted into an energy and this energy is utilized by the various parts of your body including your liver and your muscles. When you have insulin resistance, what happens? Either the insulin hormone which is there in your body is not functioning properly and this is called as insulin resistance. Insulin resistance does not happen overnight. Yes, it is a slow process. So you might have a problem today, but the problem has, might have started a few years to months ago. So when you have insulin resistance, your body will try to fight it. And they will try to fight it by producing more and more insulin hormone thinking that the insulin is not working properly. And this leads into high level of insulin hormone in your blood. And when you have a high insulin in your blood, it stimulates your ovaries to make more and more androgenic hormone like a testosterone. 
at the same time this high level of insulin also disturbs the ovulation process and that's the reason why your monthly regular cycles becomes irregular okay this is how it works now you must be wondering suddenly how i became insulin resistant now see there are plenty many reasons your lifestyle your eating habits your physical activity habits whether you are living a sedentary life or not how stressed you are how is your sleep whether do you do smoking alcohol it all depends whether there is environmental toxins all of this can also impact on your insulin resistance and they can develop so if you have a overweight or obesity you will have insulin resistance how will you know that you have insulin resistance of course we do blood test but before blood test your body itself is going to tell you that you are resistant how so first of all you might have a excess of body weight you might have a skin tags around your neck you might have a dark patchy skin what we call it as a acanthosis nigricans your waist circumference will be more than 35 then if you check your blood pressure your blood pressure can be high your uric acid can be high your cholesterol can be high so these all indicate a insulin resistance and for insulin resistance we do a blood test what testing we do we'll do a testing to check your insulin level we will check your level of a sugar we will do 3 month average blood sugar test because when you have high insulin it leads you into condition called as a pre diabetes yes a borderline diabetes so we want to know that also we also want to know what is your homa ir index so these can indicate uh, whether you have insulin resistance or not we will do your blood uh, lipid profile your triglycerides level can be high so all of these are insulin resistance marker and when you have this marker we can say that you have a insulin resistant type of pcos and when you know your type how do we treat it treatment is very easy you have to live a holistic life however the treatment also will not give you results overnight patience is required so what you have to do first of all you have to check on your body weight if you are overweight or obese you are encouraged to lose weight secondly you need to do regular physical activity or exercise you need to eat on time and a balanced food low glycemic index food with a good quality of a fat and a protein you have to let go of all your junk food and your habits like a smoking and alcohol consumption once you tackle this you also need to pay attention on your stress and your sleeping habits yes sleeping also plays important role in insulin resistance so you need to work up on all of these lifestyle factors besides that certain supplements will also help you supplements like myoinositol will help you there are medications which we use to reduce insulin resistance metformin is one then berberine is one so these are the certain medications which can also help you in pcos so this is a nutshell first category insulin resistance or metabolic pcos okay now we move to the second category of the pcos and that category is the inflammatory pcos yes inflammatory pcos we also know it by the term called as a hidden pcos now you must be wondering why hidden because we need to know what is a causative factor which is causing the inflammation and many of the times we may not be able to trace that inflammatory factor it can be hidden that's why we call it as a hidden pcos so how inflammation causes the pcos see this inflammation is a body's tissues response to any kind of a trigger and when your body is continuously triggered by a inflammatory component your body will produce more and more inflammatory markers and this continuous long term chronic inflammation will trigger ovaries 
to make more and more androgenic hormone so hormones like testosterone dhea androstenedione can be increased this chronic inflammation also suppresses the ovulation it also suppresses how the receptor functions and hormone functions and that's the reason why chronic inflammation is one of the again very common component of pcos many times it it's possible that a person can have a inflammatory pcos along with the insulin resistant pcos now where is this inflammation coming from now this inflammation can come from anywhere it come from your environmental toxins it can come even from your food yes the food if you have any kind of a food sensitivities especially of the gluten or a dairy and when you have such protein sensitivities your body will continuously be in a chronic inflammation similarly if you are leading a very stressful life again it can trigger the inflammation so inflammation is also a very common component of the causing this uh, in uh, pcos how will you know that you have a inflammatory pcos now it depends on your body symptoms so we have seen where in a patient have a different kind of a symptoms they have a fatigue they have tiredness they get a frequent headaches like a migraine headache they might have a, some digestive issues they might have some irritable bowel syndrome they might have a skin conditions where they have a lot of itching they are having a frequent allergy on your skin they are getting urticaria or hives so this can be present many people also complain of a joint pain so if you have all of these it can indicate that you have a chronic inflammation inside your body and when we do a blood testing there are certain testing which we do we find that your inflammatory markers are high inflammatory markers like high level of the esr high level of the c reactive protein high level of the lipoprotein a high sensitivity c reactive protein hscrp all of this can be high you might have a disturbance in your complete blood count your eosinophil can be elevated so these are the various ways which we can find that your inflammation is there and if you have a inflammation then you need to work upon your inflammation so how do we do that so first of all you need to cut down on the food which is highly inflammatory and most of the time it is a dairy product soya product and a wheat products which are very inflammatory similarly all kind of a junk and a processed food they are also inflammatory in nature if you have any thyroid problem if you have a high level of the antibodies again you need to work upon that you need to reduce on your stress for that you have to do meditation yoga pranayam which makes you calm down and reduces your uh, suppresses your inflammation any allergies any sensitivities you need to work upon that as i told you earlier that sometimes we don't know what is causing the inflammation and that's the reason why it is also called as a hidden pcos some herbs like curcumin ginger they all ashwagandha they help in fighting this chronic long term inflammation so if you have inflammatory pcos get yourself tested and get treated accordingly now we move to the third category of the pcos that's a adrenal or a reproductive pcos among all the categories of pcos 10% of the women have pcos of this variety now first of all you must know what is adrenal see adrenal is a gland which is located on top of your kidney it also makes hormone okay nearly 100% of the androgen hormone which is present in the body 60% of those androgenic comes from your ovary and 40% comes from the adrenal gland this adrenal gland also makes androgenic hormone adrenal pcos has a very strong connection with the family history so if in your family your mother your sister or any family in your uh, any women in your family have a pcos you might have this category in fact we consider adrenal pcos as one such variant of a 
late onset congenital adrenal hyperplasia which is also a type of a endocrine problem so adrenal pcos has a genetic component there are certain epigenetic changes which happens in the androgen and adrenal and that's the reason why this category develops adrenal pcos behaves very differently compared to the inflammatory and uh, uh, insulin resistant pcos which we saw earlier in fact it is found that if we try to uh, increase uh, certain changes or if we incorporate certain changes adrenal pcos can get triggered changes like if you suddenly cut down on your weight or sometimes if you are uh, doing lot of fasting or you cut down on your food you do strenuous exercise adrenal pcos can rather get triggered and that's the reason why it's very important for us to know that what type of pcos you have one clothes does not fit to all similarly one treatment does not fit to all and that applies very truly to the adrenal pcos how will you know if you have adrenal pcos this you will come to know only by doing a blood test see when you do a blood test your doctor is going to ask you to do a testing for the all the androgen and when we talk about the androgen androgens like testosterone androstenedione dhea dhas they all are included hormones like dheas is coming only and only from adrenal gland and this is a marker for us to decide whether you have adrenal pcos or some other variant and nearly 80% of the dhea also comes from your adrenal gland so if your dhea and dhas levels are high and if your other androgen like testosterone is normal it indicates that you have a adrenal pcos of course it is possible that a person can have a both the component of the pcos at the same time and that time the treatment can get little tricky okay how will we address the adrenal pcos so first of all you need to cut down on your stress yes stress triggers the adrenal gland so you have to calm down you have to do meditation yoga pranayam very important sleep is very very essential okay besides these two you can incorporate lot of adaptogens in your routine life adaptogens like ashwagandha will help licorice will help vitamins like vitamin b5 that's pentothenic acid zinc all of them will help you in managing your adrenal pcos all right that's the third category moving to the fourth category of the pcos and that we call it as a post pill pcos yeah post pill pill means medicine which pill so these we talk about the birth control pills or oral contraceptive pills which women might have taken birth control pills which is known by you know lot of brand names and if those component contains a drospirone or cyproterone so these kind of the hormonal pills when you consume that what happens when you consume that it is going to work upon your ovulation and you will not get pregnant but what happens after stopping that pill so after stopping the pill there can be a short term temporary rise of the androgen and this short term rise of the androgen gives you the pcos see one of the diagnostic criteria of pcos is a high level of androgen and since you have that we call that you have a pcos so how will you know so you need to ask yourself is my pcos developed after starting this oral contraceptive pill if your answer is yes if your androgen levels are high if your insulin levels are good you don't have insulin resistance if all your inflammatory markers are good your dhas is fine that means it might be possible that you have a post pill pcos and what to do in this case nothing just wait observe do a good better lifestyle and that should solve your problem all right so we saw today the four categories of pcos and which is very important for you to manage your pcos correctly i hope after watching this video you got some good useful information if you have any of your question write below in the comment box i'll try to answer them and i have a quiz for you 
Do you know what category of PCOS you have? If yes, answer that in the comment box. It will help others also to learn more about it. All right. We will meet again with some interesting topic. Till then, take care of yourself. Namaste.